and welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Scott Frost met with the media as the Huskers came out of their bye week this morning as they prepare for their home op- home game this weekend against Purdue. Frost spoke on his program's leadership heading forward. I think in general, the, a team takes on the characteristics of its leaders. Uh, leaders that are players, leaders that are position coaches, and leaders that are head coaches. And um, if leaders aren't staying cool, then it's hard for the team to stay cool. So um, I think game day is the time you should feel confident in the preparation. Um, You should feel ready, and that's probably when you should be your calmest uh, while being really fired up. to. Hear more from the Huskers head coach later in the hour. Huskers Volleyball extended their winning streak to 10 matches over the weekend, toppling Iowa and then the formerly 7th-ranked Purdue Boilermakers on Saturday. Nebraska's efforts propelled them to the 6th spot in the weekly polls released earlier this morning. Head coach John Cook will join Huskers Radio Network tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for his weekly show before the Huskers host 3rd-ranked Wisconsin Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pre-game coverage will start right here on the Huskers Radio Network at 7.30. On the individual front for volleyball, Lexi Rodriguez continues to add to her stellar freshman season with a pair of awards freshman of the week and defensive player of the week were bestowed on rodriguez and against iowa and purdue she averaged a combined 5.86 digs 1.29 assists and 0.29 aces per set senior nicklin hames took home the big 10 co-setter of the week averaging 12.43 assists four digs 0.71 service aces 0.57 kills and 0.29 blocks per set with 47 assists against purdue she surpassed 4,000 for her career and then finally for volleyball junior outside hitter at maddie Kubik will be featured as a live guest on the Big Ten Network this Wednesday at 11.40 a.m. Central. Huskers men's gymnastics released their schedule for the 2022 season this morning. Big Red will be home at the Devaney for the first time at on Saturday, February 5th at 6.30 p.m. when they host Penn State. They'll be back a month later on March 5th holding a triangular against Illinois that begins at 5 p.m. Huskers men's basketball head coach Fred Hoiberg will join us in, live inside the Acres Broadcast Center at the top of the 7 o'clock hour tonight. Men's hoop tips off this week with an exhibition against per- Peru State. That'll be at the PBA Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pre-game coverage begins here at 5 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. One thing to note in football tonight, Monday night football is going to be on in about an hour time the Saints are in Seattle Geno Smith looks to help the Seahawks keep them afloat against Alvin Kamara and the Saints that's the ticker I'm Tim Mulhelpt and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers radio network coming to you live from Memorial Stadium it's Sports Nightly all the Huskers all the time Sports Nightly is presented by the NGOT Highway Safety Office who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down Ramir in the backfield on second short fake the handoff rolling the pocket back to throw Adrian takes a shot downfield has a man open it's Ramir makes a catch 15 10 5 touchdown Nebraska Huskers burn that Wolverine defense for a second time in the third quarter now Penn State back right Johnny Parker stopped a huge block Nebraska big block couldn't have been better time Huskers lead it's 2019 step two here are your hosts Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers radio network back all refreshed after the bye week of Husker football but certainly anxious to get back into it as the big red get ready for the Purdue Boilermakers welcome to another week of sports Island. Hope you had a nice weekend. It was a rainy day yesterday, but that's okay. You need that every now and then. Did you enjoy your couple of days off? Yeah, I don't think you enjoyed your days off as much. Yeah, I uh, I got hit pretty hard by uh, getting that booster shot, but uh, uh, it was yeah, it was raining, it was thundering, but uh, lots of rain. Always need the rain, right? My dog was trying to get outside. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cold and rainy for yeah. that. Not a good day for a walk <laughs> yesterday, and they had the they had to the cancel or call off the. Half marathon in Lincoln yesterday. A lot of the runners had gotten about halfway through the race, and they called it because there was a little bit of lightning in the area, and so they had to stop it. That's too bad. A lot of people train really hard to go do that. So, uh, that did they bad. announce winners just where they were? No nope, winners. Just halted it. A couple of people decided to keep going, uh-huh. but they went and picked all the cones up. So people like that about got another mile into it and are like, I don't know where I'm going. I uh-huh. The course is not marked anymore. And they're not, and no rescheduling of I don't it. Think so yeah. No. So, uh, that does stink because, like you said, I mean, a lot of people uh, train really long time to, to be able to do that. And a lot of people come from a long ways away, a couple hours away to come take part in that because half marathons, marathons aren't just uh, every street corner. So too bad for that yesterday, but you're right, we did, did need the rain. I got a chance to watch quite a bit of football on Saturday. It was a wild Saturday. I mean, there was some near upsets. 
Um, we had a nine-overtime game in the Big Ten Conference. We had a great game in, in Ames between Iowa State and Oklahoma State. And one of the things that really struck me, Jessica, is we've got problems with officiating in college football right now. And I, and I know we've been stung by it with some, just some odd calls and strange things that happened, but it was pretty apparent to me watching games across the country. There are a lot of issues with officiating right now, and I don't like to bag on those folks because – that's, it's not easy to do. I get it. It's hard to do that. But, man, there were some odd things that happened Saturday. Yeah, and, again, I don't feel like there's any kind of transparency as to decisions that are being made. You know, I, I feel like maybe that would maybe help hold some guys accountable to some of those if you come out with, like, a weekly or, a, you know, a weekend report and on the officials, like, hey, these are the ones we missed. This is why we made this call. Maybe, you know, give a little bit of explanation as to what you were seeing in certain play calls. And then, you know, a lot of reviews, too, I feel like people also – it sometimes are oh you know, it stands it's confirmed you know maybe explain it a little bit more Tell as us to more. yeah what what are you what exactly are you seeing you know I know they go to some experts in the booth with ESPN and Fox they have their guys but they're just speculating on on what guys are seeing they're not actually inside the booth seeing what they're breaking down and why things are being rolled the way that they are so I think that'd be super helpful to fans if you could maybe come back and say hey actually yeah we absolutely missed this call and and I think fans understand look they're not to call perfect games but just let us know hey this is we absolutely missed this one this is why we called this one this is what we saw in the replay this is the view that we had just give us a little bit of explanation a little bit more transparency i think people would be a little bit happier about things i think you bring up a good point i do think that the head re- official the referee in this case in football probably needs to address at least a pool reporter after the game to get answers to what these two or three plays here, why did you call this a certain way so we have clarification? That just doesn't seem like that ever happens. Two things I want to bring up. Illinois, Penn State, which we just watched the end of it on BTN, the BTN and foot, Big Ten football on 60. That crew, Jessica, was the same crew we had here for the Michigan game mm-hmm. where they came up with a couple of earlings were like, well, I've never heard that call before. Illinois had two touchdowns early in the fourth quarter taken away from them from just really odd, strange calls. And then I mentioned the game in, in Ames, Iowa State, Oklahoma State. Iowa State scores a touchdown, and a guy kind of a little bit of a high step going in the end zone, but very, very mild, and then kind of brushes his uniform, and he gets hit with a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct and it wiped off the touchdown. It was like, I'm, are you kidding me? I mean, it's crazy stuff. Yeah, I, I, that some of the penalties, too, don't fit the crime, you know, a little bit. Like, that should not negate no a way. touchdown. No you way. Know, put it on the kickoff, whatever uh, that might be. But, yeah, I, I, I kind of wonder, too, so do um, do the crews stick together? Is it the same crew throughout the entire year? Yeah. Like, they don't switch it up. No. Because I know in basketball that switches up no, every, every game. Yeah. But, um, you know, if there's, <laughs> you know, maybe a crew that's not – they got some pieces that don't necessarily maybe aren't as experienced. Maybe you should switch it around a little bit. I don't know. I mean, if you've got one crew that's blatantly kind of making some mistakes week in and week out that people are questioning, maybe you switch it up. I don't know. You know, that's a good point. I think that they like to have some synergy that they all kind of know each other's role a little bit. I, and I, I see that perspective too, because they're covering areas. They're looking for certain things, but man, it's just, it's been rough, those two cases. And that crew that Nebraska's had a couple times this year, I sure hope we don't see that crew again for another, another one of our games. I know I know, our coaches don't want to see that crew, and I'm sure some Illinois fans. The good news is Illinois did win. Iowa State did win. Those two cases that I cited went against those two teams. They ended up winning, so maybe no harm, no foul, but it certainly was really odd. But then you kind of wonder, you know, just because they are human, are they making makeup calls later because they do think they messed up? You know, I think that happens a lot in hoops. I, I absolutely yeah. do. Yeah, I think you, you have a little yeah. makeup calls here or there. But I just I wish that, um, you know, it just maybe be mandated where after every game you have the option to interview the head referee, as you said. I agree. Now, maybe not every game, you know, the, the reporters or media want to ask them questions. But like you said, there's and maybe you have one reporter that, you know, asks all the questions for everybody, whatever that might be. But it should be at least kind of allowed every single game that one official, the head of, head referee, is made available for some type of media to answer those types of questions. Right. Because they're, you're talking about some big-time moments in some big-time games that, you know, come down to sometimes officiating and calls here or there. And let's not kid ourselves. These games could cost a coach, his entire staff, their jobs, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot riding on these games. 
Ask Matt Wells at Texas Tech. Not that there was a bad call in that game, but he's out of a job today. Texas Tech parted ways with their coach today, even though they're five and three on the season. Okay, the other thing I wanted to get into in the in this part of the show tonight is actually got brought up by on our text line. Uh, do you guys like the new overtime format? My mind might have changed to disliking it after that Penn State Illinois game. It felt too repetitive. Maybe mix in field goals instead of a two point conversion. I don't mind it. And, and Jeremiah and I were talking about this earlier today at the press conference. I don't mind it. Um, they went away from the old traditional put the ball to 25 and keep going because that LSU game with AM a few years ago went eight overtimes. And those players. The way that format was, that was about 60 more plays that those guys had to play in that game. This is just one play. After you get to the third overtime, it's a two-point try game. Now, yeah, neither team was very good. They were both kind of inept, honestly. But I don't think that should shy us away from doing that format. And I don't really want to just leave it on kickers. I think, and Searle said this today to me, he's like, it's at least real football. You're lining up, <laughs> one team's trying to stop the other team, the other team's got to try to get three yards. He goes, at least that's real football. It's not just on the toe of a kicker. Well, and you cannot just walk away with ties anymore. Just nope. because, again, like we talked about, there's too much riding. Penn State's talking about maybe making, or we're talking about maybe trying to make a college football playoff, a Big Ten title. You know, you just can't have a tie type format. So you'd absolutely have to figure out a winner. And unfortunately, like you said, both teams were not having much success. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's like, it kind of gets to that point. It kind of all gets a little messy. What do you do? You know, usually it, how, what's the rarity of that it goes past that? I mean, really rare. So really rare. It's, I mean, there was only like three teams, I think, that had played an eight or right. seven or something like that. They had, they said the stat. So it's just it's so rare that it even goes past two or three overtimes typically. I found it riveting, honestly. Yeah. I, was, I was trying to go somewhere, and I'm like, I can't leave. I got to watch it. I got to see who, how this comes out. So I hung in there, and it took about 45 minutes to play that thing. And, and think about the pressure of those coaches and players, like what they're feeling every time. It's like, uh, yeah, it just it, it couldn't end. It wouldn't end. It's no fun being a fan of teams in that kind of a game. As a, as a spectator with no dog in the fight, I I didn't I didn't mind it at all. I liked it, but I know that's a great point. I'm glad that I'm glad our listener put that out on the text line because a lot of the national pundits were really ripping the format and saying, "Got to change this. This guy has to go. This is awful." I didn't feel that way when I watched it. Maybe a lot of other people did. I didn't feel that way. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, even if you did put it up to the kickers, it could go back and forth the same sure. way too. Make, it's make, like it doesn't make. necessarily you know fix that. I don't know so. Um, it's just kind of one of those days. Neither one, <laughs> neither team could separate themselves. Like, you know, the whole game was that way. Yeah, it was, it was. You know, it was 10, 10, 13, 13 going into the overtime, or ten ten going into the overtime period when that thing got done. All right, uh, here's here are the numbers. You want to be a part of the program tonight? 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Also, we are up and running. On our YouTube stream, is anybody in there tonight? We got anybody anybody home tonight on the YouTube stream? Oh yeah, they've already uh, given us rattled off the scores from the picks, which we don't do till what Thursday this week or we no, do we'll do it Friday. We'll do it Friday. Yeah, we have a full show Friday. So they they're um, asking about the picks already, so we'll uh, hold up, hold off on those until Friday. Very good. Time to tell you that this season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two. One topping jumbo pizzas for only seventeen seventy nine each. Order yours online at Valentino's.com. Valentino's the official pizza of the Huskers. Matt Davis is going to join me in the next segment. Scott Frost had a presser earlier today. We'll play you some clips of that all this hour. And as Tim mentioned in our ticker, our first basketball show of the year. The head coach Fred Hoiberg will be here in hour number two. So get your comments, questions ready for the head coach. He'll be here at the top of the hour. Back with more Sports Nightly next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 
Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, a good play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <coughs> Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Carney Equipment, Carney, Nebraska, your big red Massey Ferguson dealer in central Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Tailgating pros agree that Lucille's famous fried chicken and more at Sap Brothers scores big with Husker fans. Be the MVP of your tailgate party this year and let Lucille's do the cooking. Stop by Sap Brothers Travel Center or visit www.sapbros.net to find out how you can elevate your tailgate party with Lucille's famous fried chicken. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official sponsor of Husker Athletics. Woohoo! Business technology one, network downtime zero. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. 
It's Game On at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. I want to give a shout-out to Mike on our text line. Jessica said, I ended up finishing the race after it got canceled. One of my favorite things is running by Devaney and then seeing the stadium and PBA at the end. It was still fun. So good. Mike, I'm glad you did that. Yeah, congratulations, Mike. I, I mean, I would never... I could never run a marathon. I tried it once. I quit midway through. Uh, but so all props and kudos to those uh, folks that do it uh, every single and, year. And I just, I, I knew it. I knew it. about 930. I heard thunder and I'm like, oh, I bet this isn't going to last much longer. And I was hoping maybe more people were closer to being done by then. But And uh, so, it's just because Saturday was pretty nice. Not bad. Yeah. So it was like. It was nice. The rain this couldn't Saturday hold off one nice. more day. This week will be good. Mid 60s, right? We'll take that. Yeah. The end of end of October. Uh, one of the other things we take on Monday nights a chance to sit down with a color analyst for the Cornhuskers, Matt Davison, and here a chance to catch up with him earlier today. Well, hope you had a chance to enjoy your bye week. Did you got do anything fun? Yeah, a little bit. You know, spent some more time with family than typical weeks during fall camp. It was birthday week last week for the nice. little one, so Teddy turned two, and so we had a birthday party for him on Sunday and yesterday in fact so uh that was fun and yeah it was a little little chance to recharge a little bit last week do you watch football on the bye week or did you push away i, I didn't watch much have to be honest i i watched a little bit saturday night but during the day i was at the office and then uh and then had a little bit of fun saturday afternoon with some family and so i didn't watch as much as you might think i think when you're in football like constantly all the time it it uh Makes maybe a little bit of time away is good. So I watched a little bit, but maybe not as much as most people. Yeah. All right. The team last week got a good chunk of days off, right? I mean, they had yeah. a couple of days of practice, but what, what was the last week like for this group? So, yeah, when you start in week zero, you have to, you get seven extra days of practice over everybody else in the country. So you have to make up those seven days. So you have to take seven days off at some point during the season. And so we chose to use up some of those seven days last, last week during the off week, and then we'll use the rest in the next off week. So, uh, we practiced twice on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, and uh, you know, they were good practices. Um, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the guys had off. So, you know, they had a chance to, to be away from us, and, and uh, the guys had a chance to go on the road recruiting. And, and so it was a really productive week, really, all around, and, and a good time of the season to get the guys out out of town and uh some of the guys you know most of the players i think stuck around some of them went home when if they haven't been home for a long time so uh it was just kind of a combination of of guys doing what they needed to do to get themselves right some guys needed to be in the training room every day to get healthy for next week so they did that and and then had some time off in the afternoon uh and then everybody was back sunday and back to practice today Coach at, pre at the press conference today said he hit the mad button at Wednesday's practice. Yeah. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of pent-up frustration with how close so many of these games have been. Was that just kind of a boil-over moment, now we move on? Oh, I, no. I mean, I think there's there's probably mad moments, you know, before you ever play a game, sure. you know, in fall camp. I mean, there's, yeah. there's times when coaches get frustrated. I don't think that was any different than maybe any other time. I mean, Coach Frost is, um, you know, about the same guy every day you know he's he loves to coach football he loves his players and I think they love playing for him and uh there was a there was a point on when he was the only one that was upset trust me some of the players were upset at, at what had happened in a couple of plays and you know so it's just accountability right you're you want to hold players accountable and players want to hold each other accountable and so 
he was asked a question and he he answered it that yeah there was a moment on wednesday where he was upset but it was nothing out of the ordinary did tom osborne have a mad button <laughs> <laughs> i knew let's see dad gummit um, <laughs> if i heard dad gummit fellas then i knew he was really mad and uh he didn't, he didn't have to raise his voice. And, you know, by the time I got here in 97, the culture was so good that there wasn't a whole lot of yelling that needed to be done. Uh, the players pretty much took care of things when they needed to. And, and uh, so uh, Coach Osborne was about what you'd think in practice. He, he didn't really – he definitely never cussed. And if he raised his voice at all, it wasn't by most people's standards. Well, Dad gummit. Dad gummit, fellas. Something different there. Matt yeah. Davis with us on Mondays with Matt. Um, is it is is what's more important this time of year a mental break or a physical break that's a load that's a tough one yeah that's a tough question probably uh, probably physically yeah I, I think you can always you know rally yourself with your teammates to to try to play you know go out and play but if physically you can't for whatever it is it's two or three bruises or a knee that needs a little break or a shoulder um you know, sometimes physically you can't do even what your mind is telling you to do. So it's a tough question in that both are needed. That's why there's off weeks. But I think mostly, you know, and then you think about college football, there's also the academic side of things. And we pushed that a lot last week too. Like um, some of these guys are in tough classes. I'm not, I, I'm certain I couldn't pass most of the classes that they're taking right i mean some of the things that uh, i mean some of these players are in so it was a good chance for them to spend more time in academics and with dennis leblanc and making sure they're taking care of things there and so you have that piece of it too um but i there's no question when you if you think about the minnesota game and think about we started practice in july and think about what you were doing in july and the first time we hit the field and then there really wasn't much of a break up until the Minnesota game. That's a long time to go without having a two or three or four day stretch where you can really ice your body, do the things to just to rest and recover. And and so it was much needed. And and so hopefully the guys, I, you know, they they took advantage of it and, and we'll be ready to go on Saturday. Thinking back to Minnesota, give me a takeaway or two as you think back to that game nine, 10 days ago. Well, it was obviously a disappointing first half, disappointing start to the game. Get a three and out to start. They go down and score. The game is right in, you know, playing right into their hands at that point. They're playing with the lead and milking the clock down to two or three seconds every play. And, um, you know, I guess so disappointing first half for sure. And, and I guess to look at it, though, and, and to think how hard they fought in the second half is a positive, right? And so... It, it could have gotten out of hand, and, and, and I'm not surprised that it didn't because I know our guys, and I know our players want to win. I know they're, they're going to do everything they can. In the second half, the offense played better. The defense was much better, had a couple of takeaways. The offense moved the ball and obviously didn't get the ball in the end zone. On the one-yard line, on the, one, on the nine-yard line, missed a field goal, drove down to the 29 on the next possession, didn't get anything out, out of that possession either. So, you know, had our chances. Uh, wildly disappointed that we didn't come away with a win. Um, but there was disappointment in the first half, but there was some solace in the fact that the team really fought in the second half to try to go out and win the game. All right, turn to the page, Purdue week now. They were ranked uh, but before they got beat on Saturday with Wisconsin. Your initial thoughts here on a Monday about Purdue on Saturday? They're, they're a good football team. You know, I think they're, they're talented um, on defense. Uh, they can get after the, the quarterback. Um, they have some good pieces on offense man i mean when when bell is playing at his best he's as good as there is in the league probably and if they can protect and and give their quarterback time he can make the throws we saw that against iowa so i mean this is a team that that is well coached um they've gotten the better of us you know in the past so this is going to be a tough another tough big 10 game like most of them are and they've they're coming off two physical games with iowa and wisconsin and then coming on the road here we have to take advantage of that a little bit with the off week and and hopefully uh come out with a lot of juice on saturday 230 it's kind of when college football was meant to be played in my eyes love yeah perfect afternoon game get up and uh get the guys some breakfast move them around a little bit in the morning and then have a little off time and then uh then get ready to come back over here and and play a football game it's gonna be great gonna be packed house fall football in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's what it's all about. So our guys are going to be ready, and, and they, they know uh, it's a one-game season at a time. You know, one at a time. Let's get this one and, and uh, hopefully play well Saturday in front of our home fans and then move on. 
Very good. All right, and have a good week. We'll see you in the booth. All right, man. Thanks, Greg. All right, Monday, this is Matt Conversation with Matt Davidson. Again, Huskers and Boilermakers, 2.30 on Saturday. If you were hoping to hear the start time for the Ohio State game, you won't know until late Saturday night, Sunday morning, as the networks use their six-day pick to put that game. I think they want to see how some of the games turn out. But we do know it'll either be at 11, 2.30, or 3. It will not be a night game. I really like 2.30 kicks. Love them. Yeah. Love them. Um, but so the um, the six day window they can only utilize that twice, twice. right? For, this is the first for, time. Yep. You know, there's only a month ago, so kind of knew one was coming. Yeah. So there there it is. Hopefully they don't do it for Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and Iowa, we know the start time, so uh-huh. we only have after that. Th- that's the only game we won't know the start time here pretty soon. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office four zero two. 413-2400. The number to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. We're back to play some clips from the press conference earlier today with Scott Frost. That is straight ahead. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? New startup companies, jobs, and university-licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in. Get out and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. 
Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. From the field to game day tailgates, make the most of the season with a truck from Woodhouse. Our team is ready to help you get the job done with a full lineup of our new or new-to-you trucks from Ford, Chevy, Ram, GMC, and Nissan. Plus, shop, finance, and buy your way online at woodhouse.com or one of our 17 dealerships. So get a win this season with a truck from Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTech Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. Visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November 12th. Get yourself entered for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Huskers season finale against the Iowa Hawkeyes. It will include pregame tailgate passes. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska. You can make you a winner this season. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Again, a reminder, our first basketball show coming up at the top of the hour. The head coach, Fred Hoiberg, will be here. Huskers have an exhibition game on Wednesday against Peru State. And then on Halloween, next Sunday, they'll take on the Colorado Buffaloes at 11 o'clock. All right, let's uh, get into some clips from the press conference earlier today with the head coach, Scott Frost. He was asked about how the bye week went and the recovery process of his team. As a staff, we got uh, a lot of time to watch them. Obviously, then we watched uh, the Wisconsin game um, yesterday uh, several times, and uh, it helps. I um, thought the guys had more of a spring in their step again. Um, you know, they were, they were a little worn down and tired. That's natural with eight straight weeks and starting a week early. Um, so I, I think it was good for our guys just to get refreshed. One of the things that you hope to get is maybe some healthy bodies back. Deontay Williams went down with an after picking off that pass in Minnesota two weeks ago with an apparent knee injury, here's the coach with an update on him and how that may affect the secondary moving forward. Yeah, um, you know, Deontay will be back this season. I don't know when. Um, you know, you, you always want to have everybody up when you're playing a team like this. They, they're going to throw a lot of stuff at you. You have to be ready. You have to be disciplined. And they got... Uh, some good players everywhere, but definitely a receiver that can beat you. Uh, so we got to have eyes on him and um, got to cover well and, and try to get to the quarterback. Uh, you know, I think Purdue had had a good chance uh, Saturday. I think they turned it over five times. Uh, it's hard to win that way. Um, so I, I don't expect that uh, we'll get that same effort from them. Expect them to come in ready to go and uh, another good Big Ten team that'll be a battle. Felt so bad, Jessica, for Deontay. Makes a great play. Maybe could have run a little bit once he had it, and then he goes down and hurt me. That was awful. I know, but, man, props him for holding on to it because in that moment when you go down and you don't know how serious it is at that at that moment and 
you you're scared and don't know what's going on and he held on to it and it still was a turnover for the Huskers that was that was a big moment but yeah other than him it sounds like most people getting back healthy I know that they were kind of you know banged up had some guys that were really tired and had felt the uh had felt the I guess the process of the whole stretch to start this season so the fact that they kind of got some time away and kind of got to rejuvenate themselves hopefully they'll be back and uh other than him be back ready to go and healthy one thing we talked about last night last week was red zone offense and the the Huskers have struggled in that red zone this season and 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 as the, the question that came to the coach today about that was a lot of teams in college football are struggling in red zone offense look at the Nine overtime game between Illinois and Penn State. Those teams couldn't find the end zone from three yards out. Here's the head coach talking about red zone offense. Um, you know, I, I think you just got to be able to run base stuff and get it in. You have to be able to block. Just speaking for us, I can't speak for everybody. Um, our, our basic stuff has to be a little better so we get more yards on just our basic stuff. Just means we need to block a little better, run a little better. Um, you always go into game with some schemes to try to scheme something into the end zone. Obviously, there was a nine overtime game in the league. I don't think you ever have enough for something like that. Um, but you, you can't you can't have 20 of those or you're wasting a lot of time practicing on that. So I, I think really it comes down to just uh, being efficient in what you do and, and being a little better at it. Here, here's Nebraska's red zone numbers. They have scored points on 76% of their drives in the red zone their opponents 90 percent they've scored touchdowns on 63 percent their opponents only 50 so that's good for eric Schneider's defense they've held teams only 50 percent scoring touchdowns in the red zone but 76 percent compared to 90 that's a big difference absolutely yeah and you know we've talked so much about it how well they can move the ball up and down the field they just you know they've got to find ways to get those points on the board and you know hopefully too you know another week off with with Connor Culp and the kicking, we talked about how heartbreaking that was for him. But, you know, just even being able to confidently run your kicker out there, even if it's just three, but being able to absolutely put guarantee that you're going to put points on the board when you get in the red zone, they got to figure out ways to do that. You're right. Kickers have missed some of those red zone opportunities. Yes. So that's yep. been a, Not you know. everybody scores a touchdown every time they get in that's the red right. zone. And so, you know, there are times that when that does happen, when you do get stalled and you want to just at least get three on the board, you got to have confidence in that aspect too. All right, uh, the coach also hit on a couple other topics that uh, I think were interesting today. He was asked about, you know, your, where's your temperament right now? Do you ever, I think the question was, do you ever hit the mad button uh, as a coach with this team and how frustrating some parts of this season has been? Here's, here's his response. No, uh, you know, we, we don't let you guys into practice for a lot of reasons. That's one of them because we do hit the mad button sometimes. Um, I hit it on Wednesday. Um, I put him in a lot of situations Wednesday with simulating the game online just to try to help them experience that even more. Not that we haven't done that before, but just continue to try to put them in competitive situations. This one matters. Can we count on you when it counts? We did a lot of really good things. We did a couple dumb things, and um, I wasn't happy about it. Uh, so there's, there's a time and a place for that. And uh, certain, cer- certain coaches we have on staff are better at hitting the mad button than others. Uh, but uh, they're getting they're getting the players to play hard. Uh, this team believes how good they are, and we got another really good opponent coming in here, so we get another chance. All right, you've been down on that sideline. Which coach probably hits the mad button more than others? What do you think? Oh man, Mike Dawson looks like a guy that probably gets pretty fired up. Yeah, he does. Um, I, I think uh, Greg Austin Greg goes. Austin? I mean, he he can get on them, but then he also is very much a guy that you know loves on him and and you know cheers him on and is and is such a good hype man too I, I think that's kind of the key here and and we've heard coach frost talk about that recently and trev actually on on uh, will compton's busting with the boys podcast about it there it, there's a balance you can't just stay mad all the time right. and you can't not be ever get mad and so i think greg austin does a good job of balancing uh both of those i'm trying to think who else coach tuyote's pretty chill all the time you know mm-hmm. i mean he he's but he he gives some great speeches um uh, yeah, I'm... Who else is down there? Ryan Held's down there on the sideline during games. He no, I don't gets, think he is. He's in the booth because he, oh, he's the one right. that he's made... He's, he caught that one play. Yeah, he's caught yeah. caught a couple of those. Um, I don't know because Chenander's in the booth and who else is Lubick's on the sideline? in the booth. Yeah. So, Becton's down low. He's not a he's not a mad button hitter, I don't think. Um, in fact, Sean will be our coach Thursday night, by the way, so... 
Yeah, you know, not not really any of them are, are big time huge screamers. I mean, they'll get on to their guys absolutely, which you, is you typical. To. But it's yeah. not like a scream and yell the whole time by any means. Well, one thing that the staff had a chance to do last week for the first time in over 600 days, and that was get out and go visit high schools and go to games on Friday night or Thursday night or whatever the case may be. Here's the coach talking about being able to leave town and go see some games. Yeah, it's great. How many days did you say it was? Like over 620 days. 620 days. Um, all the coaches hit the road. I went to a high school in a game. Um, the response was awesome. I was just talking to Barrett Root about this morning, and uh, he's stuck mostly local during recruiting, but the response they got from coaches and administrators and students, um, I think people are enjoying watching this team. I think they're proud of this team. Um, we got to get it over the hump, but I was really encouraged to hear the, the response and reaction that coaches said they got on the road and um, really tough recruiting without being able to go out and evaluate and go out and, and get in front of coaches and, and get into high school. So uh, we needed this and um, it's a good first step. That was so big to be able to get out and do that. And they'll get a chance to do it again here in a few weeks, although their picks of games will go down. Cause all high schools will be in playoffs yeah. by mid-November. Did you see the picture floating around of Coach Frost with the girls in hot dog costumes? Yeah, that was that was cute. That uh, was cute. But, yeah, I mean, high school football, that's a fun atmosphere. It's oh. a fun feel to get out there. And so probably a nice kind of relaxing. You're, you're looking at future talent, but also kind of takes you back a little bit. So it had to be fun to, to get out and get back out recruiting and kind of get back to normal a little bit. See some head coaches, high school coaches, see some athletic directors, see some prospects. Look them Eye to eye, that's the big part about it. All right, we'll leave you this one comment about Purdue. They've got a terrific defensive end, George Karloftis, probably a first-round NFL draft pick. We've said that a couple times this year. He fits right in the mold of Aiden Hutchinson, some of those great defensive ends. Here's the coach talking about Karloftis and the challenge of Purdue's pass rush. He's a good player. He's one of the better players that we've played. Um, I think he's got good guys around him, too. Um, Across the board, I think they're good pass rushers. Really impressed with their Sam linebacker, number six. Um, they're good defense. They've, they've really uh, become a, one of the better defenses in the league, in my opinion, watching them on tape. Uh, you got to know where Karloftis is all the time uh, and account for him. And uh, we got to battle and do the best we can. Karloftis had a scoop and score in the Wisconsin game on Saturday for Purdue. He's really good. He didn't play against Nebraska last year. He was hurt, but... Yeah, you're going to have to find out where he is on Saturday. Our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop Woodhouse First. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time and money. Shop, finance, and buy it online at woodhouse.com. Back with our final segment of Hour One next. Husker Men's Hoops is right around the corner, and you won't want to miss any of the action at Pinnacle Bank Arena this season. A limited number of Nebraska men's basketball season tickets are on sale now and are only available while supplies last. To lock in your Husker men's basketball seats today, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution 
for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker basketball takes the floor on Wednesday night at PBA against Peru State. It's an exhibition game. Our network coverage begins at 5. Husker volleyball, same night at They'll be at the Devaney Center, 8 o'clock for serve, number three, Wisconsin. So a top 10 battle on Wednesday night for Husker Volleyball. And Husker football, Purdue on Saturday, 2.30 kick, 10.30 for pregame coverage here on the network. And that's What's on Tap presented by Bud Light. Starting to get busy. The crossover season's here. Crossover season. I, I really enjoy November. I think it's fun. Um, you got college hoops and volleyballs kind of getting to their peak point of the fun season and um, yeah, it's and I'm so excited to watch both of these basketball teams and going to get a first glimpse at the men's team on Wednesday. So, I, I mean, I don't think I've made any uh, I haven't been secretive about that basketball is my favorite sport. And so I'm so excited about basketball season and excited for both these teams. Like I said, I think both of them have some have a chance to do some uh, damage in the postseason this year. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility line's marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Husker Volleyball started this stretch of five matches against seven teams that are ranked uh, on Saturday by beating Purdue. Slow start, but, boy, once they kind of turned the corner in that first set, they were unstoppable. Yeah, they, they look good. Um, and then Lexi Rodriguez, again, she's the – Defensive player of the week, the freshman. I'm telling you, I said it last week. I, I mean, she's going to be in the running for national freshman of the yeah. year. Uh, she's unbelievable. And so, but to, to you know, beat a team that's ranked like Purdue and, and you know, still not even play your best. I mean, that's kind of not start off exactly how you wanted. That's, again, pretty scary for this team. I still, I still think they're pretty far from their peak. Um, I think they're continuing to trend upwards, absolutely. But, you know, we've been hearing them talk about a lot that, they're still kind of a work in progress, which you don't want to be playing. You you don't want Not to be yet. playing your best. You don't want to have peaked yet. So I think they're going to continue to, to trend upwards, which is scary for the teams that, that are left on the schedule for them. We are about a month away from Selection Sunday for the NCAA tournament, but what a week. We mentioned Wisconsin Wednesday, then at Minnesota Saturday. They're a top 15 team. So this will be a fun, fun week for Husker Volleyball. Again, 8 o'clock at the Devaney Center on Wednesday. Pre-game coverage begins at 7.30. Buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Husker Soccer ended their season yesterday. They won their last three matches, so good for them. A little momentum, a pretty young team. Good momentum going into the offseason. Absolutely, and what, what a way to send off those seniors yep. to, on a high note. Very you good. always want to... You, you never want to end the season kind of with your seniors and how much they've kind of dedicated a lot of these players that have come back for an extra year. You want to send them out on the right note. So good for them. Won their last three. They could have easily kind of packed it in at the end, but they won. Played for maybe their best soccer in the last two weeks of the season. So congratulations to them. I can't believe we've already checked the sport off. I know. Soccer's over. I, we ju- I feel like it was just we were out there for <laughs> the scrimmage there in August out at the press box. Feels like that. <laughs> Next hour, our first basketball show of the year. The head coach in studio. Come on back and join us. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Experience the Woodhouse Lincoln difference today. We make it easy to find the right vehicle for you. Like the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. Find comfort in the extreme with revitalizing interior features and a sculpted exterior design. Lincoln keeps you safe on your journey with Lincoln Copilot 360, a suite of safety features that come standard. Elevate your driving and shopping experience with Woodhouse Lincoln by visiting us at Woodhouse Place or online woodhouselincoln.net. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare. Advanced Manufacturing, Construction, IT, and Ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Against McGowan's, he's a little bigger, forces it up and misses, rebound by McGowan's, off that miss by Mahoney. McGowan's comes the other way, all the way to the rack, and jams it with a right hand. Skies high and nails that shot on the dunk, and it's a two-point game. Shakes, bakes, drives, puts it up, no, kicks it. Webster, three ball, got it! Holy cow, Nebraska's come from behind and has taken the lead on a three ball by Kobe Webster. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to our first basketball show of the new year. And delighted to have the head coach with us for the next hour. If you want to be a part of this one, phone lines, text lines are open at 402 402- 413-2400. We're also up and streaming on our YouTube channel. We have the chat room live as well. If you want to ask the coach a question, I certainly can pass that along to you. Great to see you. I bet you're ready to stop practicing a little bit and get in the, get in the arena and play a team. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Greg. Our guys have been beating on each other <clears throat> going all the way back to June, and there, we have so much time with them now. And, and believe me, it's a luxury to have that after what we went through last year with COVID and not really having an off season with all the new faces that we had and then obviously the shutdown that we had in the middle of the season so we have been able to instill a lot of things both offensively and defensively from our from a philosophy standpoint now it's about going out there and carrying that over uh once we start playing uh uh, uh, opponents and you know starting out with a good opportunity on wednesday um you know i talked to bob today uh coach of peru and he's excited about his team he feels really good about him he's got a competitive group uh, that obviously are going to be very excited. I think they have 10 Nebraska players on their roster. So, you know, it's a phenomenal opportunity for them and, and a great uh, situation for us to get out in front of our fans. And that's the other thing with last year, not being able to fr- uh, play in front of a full house at PBA, uh, also uh, on the road in the venues that we played. You know, our guys are excited to get out there and, and show what, the, what we've been working on. And uh, we know we have a lot of work to do. The first time you have a situation like this, playing against other uh, uh, other teams, you learn a lot about yourselves and what you really need to work on and get right before the opener. And we get two opportunities this week, not only with Peru State, but also with Colorado on Saturday to be able to play a high major opponent in a Power 5 league. And uh, again, that will show us a lot of things that we need to work on to try to clean up and, and make sure we get buttoned down before we play the opener against Western Illinois in the ninth. You talked about having so much time with this group going back into June when they, a lot of them arrived on campus. How do you keep it fresh? <coughs> what did you do to try to keep the guys mentally locked into what you were trying to do? Well, it's, uh, that's the battle because we do have a lot of time with them right now. And back when I played, we started on October 15th. We weren't allowed <clears throat> Excuse me, midnight to work madness, with the coaches. October 15th. Exactly. Yeah. It was midnight madness. And he went out there, and there was such an excitement in the air leading up to that first day of practice. All we did in the offseason was play pickup basketball, and the coaches couldn't even watch that legally. <laughs> so, you know, we, uh, right now for us, it's, you know, a lot of time together. You get four hours. I think more beneficial than the on court time to really, Greg, is, is the time in the weight room and, and get to uh, work with our strength coach. Uh, Kurt Joseph into who's work, new. who's new and is doing a phenomenal job, and also to work with um, Chris Bach, who I think is the best in the business in his field as a sports scientist. So you know that's really where I think the benefit is those four hours they get a week with the strength and conditioning staff. Uh, you know we are able to add our, uh, a lot of things as far as what we're trying to in- install and put in, uh, but then you got to be careful. You got you worry about burnout uh, with these guys because you get the two summer sessions. We started on June eighth. Uh, had a month with them in that first summer session. They had a couple days off, and they went right into their second summer session in, in July. They go home for a couple weeks where they recharge, and then we get the four hours in the fall uh, workouts as well. So they, they are. They're just ready to, to start going up against teams. We've gotten a little bit sloppy this last week, and I think some of that is just ready to get out and play other people. So it'll be a welcome sight <clears throat> come, uh, come Wednesday. You mentioned three four weeks ago that your biggest challenge was going to be to try to figure out a rotation. Where are you at on that? Well, we're, we're closer, and then I think I've got it figured out, and then a couple of guys come out that <clears throat> may not have been in the rotation and play great. And um, I don't know if I'll have it completely figured out, to be honest with you, Greg, even on opening night. It may be different when we start conference play. Uh, but, you know, we've got this big sample size now, and we stat every live drill that we do, 
And, you know, you just take the whole body of work and then you put the guys out there that you feel deserve it, that have played the best basketball uh, in the offseason heading into that opener on November 9th. Uh, you know, we had guys that were out of the rotation early last year that ended up in the rotation once we started conference play. We had guys uh, that were coming off the bench that ended up starting for us late in the year. So the message, and I talked to all of them today, uh, it's so important to have honest conversation with your team. You don't want any confusion going into the season. Um, you know, I played every role you can possibly play in this game. I was a bench guy. I was behind the bench in street clothes. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a starter and a captain. So, you know, the one thing I always appreciated is when my coach talk to me about what my role was. I may not have liked what he said, but I appreciated the honesty. So I try to have that same mentality with our players is to make sure that they understand what their role is going into the season, but that may not be the end, um, what it looks like at the end. And that's my biggest message, always be ready, because at some point this thing's a marath uh, marathon, not a sprint. Uh, their name will be called. And you go out there, you take advantage of your minutes, uh, play them as hard as you possibly can, worry about the things you can control. Uh, and go out there and show me that you belong. All right, take me back to last spring. You're putting together the non-conference schedule. You don't have a tournament. You're not in any kind of a tournament. What were you hoping to get uh, And you, as you put this thing together for your schedule? Yeah, I, I like our schedule. And, you know, again, starting with these two exhibition games, it, it's going to be uh, very beneficial to get out there and play against these, uh, these two opponents that we will play this week. Uh, you know, looking at our first couple games, um, you know, and then the four high majors starting with Creighton on the third game uh, that we have after playing two, uh, you know, good high quality uh, teams that we'll open up the season with and then having the opportunity to go play Auburn uh, in Atlanta, who's a top 25 team to be able to go on the road in the ACC challenge and play North Carolina State, uh, get K-State uh, at home as well. And then some really good high quality mid majors that we have on our schedule as well that will really help prepare us for the grind of the Big Ten, the 20 game schedule uh, that we have and hopefully put us in a position, uh, you know, to do something in the postseason uh, this year. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a good schedule. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I, I think our fans are as well. With the net, which is kind of the old RPI system, it's been tweaked. Do you have to worry as much about that because of the strength of the league or do, does that factor into how you put the non-con together? Yeah, I mean, you do want to play <clears throat> and be tested in the non-conference schedule. You can't just play, uh, you know, all those teams in the 300s anymore. It's, it's going to affect uh, everything else. But the strength of schedule within the Big Ten, yeah, has made that to the point where you don't want to schedule too many of them. Right. And, you know, I mean, you're going to get worn out before you start your conference and then, you know, be in a tough position once you start playing those 20 games. Uh, so, again, we feel good about, uh, about the makeup of our schedule, and hopefully that will prepare us for, uh, uh, for the Big Ten. Let's, uh, we got a text coming in here for you. This is Doc in Lincoln. said, hey, Coach, talk about the drills you do with the team on boxing out, rebounding. It seems like it's an area where we need to get better. Uh, no doubt about it. It, it is one of my concerns uh, with our team. <clears throat> uh, we do block out drills pretty much daily, and uh, you know the challenge is making sure they continue to be consistent with that. Uh, especially as the game wears on and there's fatigue. You know, we don't have, uh, you know, the biggest team in the league, the most physical team in the league. So we do box out drills uh, pretty much every day. Was that Doc Sadler, by the way? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, no, it's, it's a great question. And, and again, it is one of my concerns with, uh, with our group is, is to go out there and find a way to do it collectively. Uh, you know, we're not just going to do it with our bigs. Our guards have to go in there and help out on the glass. Okay, another got Rudy in Florida says, I, I'm here. We have some really good shooters on the team. Does that translate to the free throw line as well? God, I hope so. We're, <laughs> yeah, we, we do have shooting. We, we feel that's area where we upgraded as much as anything with this roster. Uh, you know, we got a guy in Alonzo Verge that's done a great job getting in the paint, making plays. And when you have floor spacers out there, uh, you know, gravity guys, then that's going to open up opportunities and plays at the rim, which are the most efficient shots in the game. Uh, if they do help off, that creates the second highest efficient shot, which is the open uh, three-pointer. So we do. We feel good about the shooting that we've added, and I, you know, I, I certainly would hope that that would uh, also translate to better free throw percentage. I want to talk to you more about Alonzo because he was a late addition to your team, and it came, I think, after you learned that Delano was going to stay in the draft. How big of a impact has he made and how big was that to get him to come here yeah it, it was it was such a huge pickup for us when delano decided to stay in the draft and and delano <clears throat> you know it was pretty likely he was coming back and then delano took advantage of a situation where he was basically the last alternate to get into the d league g league showcase in chicago it took full advantage of it played great 
uh, almost had a triple double in uh, in the two games that he played and really put himself on the map as far as a guy that had a pretty d- good chance of being drafted you know he was still in and out in and out and then he made the decision to stay in which obviously that's worked out great for Delano he's he's played I think in every game that they've had so far and signed a full guaranteed contract so could not be more excited and happy for Delano that did leave a hole in our backcourt and we were very fortunate we had talked to Alonzo a little bit leading into the season and built a relationship with him and that that played a big part in us ultimately getting him but you know we really did need that depth uh, especially that position and he's, he's been terrific for us tell me tell all the audience a little bit about his game a little bit about what where what you've seen in the three or four months you've had him here yeah very shifty very quick a, a guy that really does a good job of getting into the paint and now it's about making the right play once he gets in there and uh, a good finisher at the rim uh, he, he's shooting the ball well uh, right now but the thing that he really has done a good job of is spraying the ball out and getting our shooters open looks. Uh, defensively, I've, his on the ball pressure has been something that I've been uh, very pleased with. And, you know, that starts with him. He's the head of the snake out there on defense. And, um, you know, again, a guy that's got a lot of experience. He's played high major basketball. He's put up numbers. You know, the biggest thing he talks about all the time is winning. And he has not played in an NCAA tournament. And collectively, that's the biggest area where our guys uh, need to make sure every day they're together with that same message is to do it for the team, uh, to put it ahead of the individual and to go out there and and try to get us in the tournament. You took him uh, along with with Trey to Indianapolis for the media days. That was a pretty snappy outfit. That Alonzo had you. Did you work with him on that? Or? Yeah, he, those were actually my sunglasses. That, you know, <laughs> That's just, what just I kidding. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of went in there and, and stole the show. And yeah, he, he was great. Uh, I think a lot of his stuff was all over social media with, uh, with that outfit. But yeah, he, he, uh, he had a good time with it. Great experience for both he and Trey. Anybody who gets to go to that, right? I mean, that's a, that's a huge collection of writers that are there that day. You kind of run them through a car wash of interviews. It's a good experience for a young man. It was. It was great. I thought this year that we went out uh, to Indianapolis and we did it with the women's team. Yeah. And I thought that was really, really cool how they did that and put us all together. Um, you know, we got into Indianapolis. Uh, there was a class conflict that we didn't get into Indy until about 2 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the hotel and then had to get up early and go through all the interviews but uh yeah i was i was really proud of those guys i thought they did a great job representing our program you've had some tough trips to indianapolis lately coach yeah <laughs> i know it used to be a good memory it was a great for memory you. for me that's where it all started since then it's, it's all gone downhill gone downhill from there uh crypto king in our youtube chat said last year you said you thought delano banton was a a pro player do you have guys currently in the team you think could play professional basketball <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think we've got some guys that will put themselves in a position. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, I think we've got a lot that have a chance to play beyond college. And that's what everybody wants, you know, to do, play this. I was very fortunate to play this game for a living, to do what I loved, uh, to go out there and make a living doing it. And, you know, I'm hopeful that our guys will get that opportunity. Uh, Delano absolutely is a 6'8 playmaker that played in an NBA system uh, here. He called me after their first day of minicamp when he was – uh, up in Toronto getting ready for the summer league and, and said, I, I just feel a step ahead because we're running the exact same thing now that we ran at Nebraska. And that all matters. You know, yep. you only have one opportunity to make a first impression, and, and Delano took full advantage of that. Another text for you, Doug, in Norfolk. Coach, does basketball have the COVID eligibility like football and baseball? Guys, given that extra year. Our guys did get an extra year last year. Okay. So uh, like we've got. Kobe. Kobe, yep, Kobe and Trevor are both six-year uh, seniors this year, super seniors. And, uh, you know, the guys that should have been seniors are still juniors, and they're going to have a decision to make uh, after the season is over. Good good move by the NSA to do that, you think? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's fair, uh, just based on everything that happened last year, to have the option. Uh, not everybody will use it. And, uh, you know, and looking at some programs where guys maybe wanted to come back and, uh, you know, they didn't have the – uh, the roster to uh, to do it. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of coming together collectively and seeing if it's the right move uh, for the player and the team. A little harder on roster management for you coaches. It is hard. There's no doubt about it. And I even look at it from a standpoint of having uh, twins that were playing that did not get the opportunity to play in AAU <clears throat> that yeah. senior year and, you know, get out there and, and, and get recognized that way. And then also – a lot of those schools, I'll take Sam, for example, who's playing for us. I'm really happy he's with us. He's doing great. But 
schools were waiting to see what their rosters look like. So they may not have pulled the trigger, um, you know, like they normally would in, in a normal year. So it did affect a lot of kids uh, in a lot of different ways. The NCAA, I think it was June 1st, lifted the the ban on getting out of campus and going and seeing. Well, did that return your sor- summer to normal on the recruiting trail? It made it a lot more hectic, I'll say that. It was, Probably, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was crazy. I think more than being on the road was the, just all the – official visits that we had and it it was it was really it was great for us i mean to be able to get kids to this campus and show them all the resources that we have uh just the whole uh situation that we have from nutrition to our sports science department and be able to show them the facilities that we have which are as good as any in the country uh getting them now to the football games where obviously the atmosphere there is you know as good as any and just be able to show them the overall experience that they would have as a student athlete at the University of Nebraska has been has been great. Um, you know, I'm going to go recruit tomorrow after practice. I'm going to fly down and go to a couple different schools and and see a couple kids that are very high on our uh, uh, list for the class of 2023. And you know, that's just again we did through Zoom. Uh, I thought we had a lot of success through Zoom, uh, but to have some normalcy back and to get out and see kids. Uh, it's it's been great for all of you us. You may continue to use Zoom to a certain extent, right? Yeah, it it's something that you know you just have to make do with what you have, and you know with the situation and the circumstances, uh, that was all we had was the Zoom calls, and we still were able to show campus tours on that or virtual tours, I should say. Uh, you know, if they needed to talk to an academic advisor, we could put them on the phone there. Uh, we could watch style of play edits by sharing our screen and, and watching that. So. You know, it was. It, it was. it was certainly made it for us, at least made it manageable to continue to recruit and try to get high-level kids here. Do you still use it now? Uh, we'll still use it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll still recruit. Have eye contact with Absolutely, yeah. Man. So we'll, we'll schedule some Zooms. Uh, but, again, nothing meets that face-to-face uh, recruiting. Matt Abdomasi was on the shelf for a while this summer, wasn't he? Is he okay now? Is he, he was. Is he moving again? Yeah, Matt had shoulder surgery and uh, actually had his bicep tendon reattached. Ooh. So he had a really painful summer. And, uh, you know, he was in a lot of pain before that. He w- really couldn't sleep very well and had to basically sleep in a recliner. Uh, but he's doing great. It's, it's good to see him back up. He's still got a little bit of issue going on with his elbow. But, uh, you know, Matt's the best. I don't, I don't think there's anybody better uh, at their job than what Matt does and continue to get high-level kids in front of us and, and have the opportunity, uh, especially when you get them on campus here, to show them all the things that I talked about earlier. Uh, but Matt's relationship building is, you know, is the best, and that's why we hired him in Minnesota when I was working for the Timberwolves, uh, and he's been phenomenal for me at both stops at Iowa State and Nebraska. Did that put you one man down on the road, or were you able to send it, somebody else out did, Yeah, we, we were able to replace Matt, and uh, and we had Doc uh, go on the road. And, well, he's, and, he's <clears throat> gimpy at two right now. <laughs> he's, he's doing all right. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing a lot better. But, yeah, to, just to be able to have a full staff, that's how it works. If you have one man down, then you can replace that person on the road. He's just happy the bachelor's back on TV. <laughs> exactly. Likes to, watch, likes to watch that. The coach is with us until the top of the hour, 402-413-2400. The number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question. Keep the text coming. I see a couple more coming in. I'll get those questions to the coach in the next segment. If you want to dot us up, you're doing that on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop Finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. More with the coach coming up. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today, we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's Corn and Soybean Farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. 
Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to be in Memorial Stadium this season by purchasing a three-game football mini plan. The three-game mini plan includes tickets to each of the three remaining home games versus Purdue, Ohio State, and Iowa for only $195. Tickets are only available while limited supplies last. To get yours today, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every season presents a new opportunity. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, which is lean into every new opportunity. They focus on their roots and continue to stay tougher together with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperative leans on their values of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. Aurora Cooperative, tougher together. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. 
Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. It's our Husk, first Husker basketball show of the year. Head coach Fred Hoiberg with us until the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of this show with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Wyatt in Alma. Coach, how excited are you to have fans back in PBA and how much truth is there to the home court advantage with an arena packed full of fans? Uh, it's it's one of the most exciting things about our sport is the home court advantage that we have. And it's really all across the Big Ten. You know, we, we've led the nation in attendance, I want to say, for 40, 45, 47 years in a row now. And you're playing in some of the greatest venues in all of college basketball, including ours. I, you know, again, I think I've told this story before, but I was blown away when that first time I stepped into PBA when I was coaching in Chicago, and we played our last preseason game of the year against the Mavericks in Pinnacle Bank Arena, and it was just incredible that facility and uh, you know just everything about it. So, you know, I we scrimmaged when I was at Iowa State my second year, I believe it was, and that was the first year that the Hendricks facility was open. So, you know, just facilities ac- across. The board here, especially in our sport, well, all sports are are top notch. But to have fans back in the building, I mean, that's what it's all about: is to go out there and, and try to put on a good show, uh, get them to rally behind you, uh, help you through the tough times, and then keep the keep them going uh, when you go on a roll. So, yeah, we're certainly excited to be back in there on Wednesday. We can't really see it now; it's dark outside. But they're putting the new facility off to our left here. Mostly football, but the other athletes are going to use it. It's going to be with a study table. A training table is going to be in there. Are you starting to use that on a recruiting pitch? Uh, we are, yeah. We, we do use that. And, you know, it's not like we don't have a great one right now with everything, yeah. with, the, uh, with, the, with the stadium. But with everybody building these brand new ones and uh, everybody trying to be bigger and better, it's, it's going to be up there at the, right at the top. So, yeah, we're, we're excited to see the finished product. And, uh, uh, you know, no houseman construction will do a great job on it. How often are you practicing in PBA? I know there was some dirt for a rodeo in there this weekend. Yeah, I saw Doc was in there, and I asked <laughs> him did. why he didn't, why didn't there. get on the bull. But he, uh, yeah, it, it's we we get in there as much as we can, Greg. Just it, it is a different background, yeah. so to get in there and and uh, uh, you know shoot on those rims, it's important. We'll be in there tomorrow, uh, the day before the game, and. Uh, yeah, just to, we, we get in there as much as we can just based on what the schedule is. You said something today that is interesting. You said you're going to have kind of a full-blown practice even on Wednesday. Yeah, it, it's just there's too much work to be done at this time. And, you know, we've got a lot of special situations we're working on. Uh, we're continuing to add to our zone package both offensively and defensively. So, um, you know, we have, it's funny how you have all this time and then you get down about you know, nine or ten days before, and you realize you got a lot more stuff that you have to work on and perfect. So, yeah, we'll we'll go hard tomorrow. Uh, have a, a good, really hard practice, and then you know we'll get a good hour in uh, with the guys, basically have it a practice, almost make it like a two a day uh, when we get out there on um, on Wednesday night. I've yet to meet a coach who felt like they were ready for game one. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, just, and then and then you know you always have the concerns and then you talk to peers in this business and they have the exact same thing you know it's you talk about the issues that you have and what you need to improve on you call your buddy to vent and see how they're doing and they they're same complaining thing. about the same thing so <laughs> it is yeah but uh, there's so much uh, as i said earlier you learn so much about your team that first time you go out there and play against another opponent transition defense is always the number one thing that you have to get better at rebounding is always something that you see on film when you play against other uh, opponents that you need to get better at. Simple plays, hitting singles, not home runs, are something that you always need to improve on. So we'll, we'll learn a lot about ourselves uh, after this week, and we get a good opportunity to correct uh, with about eight, eight or nine days to go before the opener. Now the text for you, what's the loudest arena to play in in the Big Ten? Uh, it's a great question. I, I haven't played in all of them yet, just uh, with first year, not, not going to all the arenas. I did experience most of them uh, when I was following my son Jack when he was playing for Michigan State. And uh, Purdue was one that I think was up there is, is one of the loudest. Uh, you know, when I was talking to coaches about this job when it came open, uh, I talked to Coach Izzo a lot just with my son playing for him. I really built a great relationship, went to a lot of practices, was there for their final four run. And that was right about the time, uh, you know, when, when this job opened. And he said, I'm telling you, in our league, uh, Nebraska is one of the greatest atmospheres that you'll find. So that, that was great to hear, and, and, and it certainly held true. Another text, Coach, uh, excited to watch you and your staff continue to build Nebraska and continue to bring in great talent. That being said, 
generally how do you feel about 2022 and 2023 recruiting right now i feel i feel good uh, we've had you know i can't talk specifics obviously by in, per ncaa rule but we've had and the people that have followed i think have seen that the high caliber player and talent that we've had on our campus uh you know again matt and i will head out tomorrow and, and hit a couple kids for that 23 class uh, you know, we feel really good about our young players uh, with the recruiting class that we had for this year. And then if we can continue to build upon that and, and continue to add talent uh, to get us where we need to be and win, not only win now, but win consistently, you know, that's obviously a huge part of it. Uh, so, yeah, we feel good about where things are. Uh, signing, uh, fall signing period will be Coming next up. week. And, you know, we feel we're going to add a couple of high quality players. Carla, text for you here, Coach. Please ask Coach how the COVID protocols are different this year from last year concerning travel and playing in games. Looking forward to the season and watching another Husker basketball team. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Carla. It, it, it is different we, because the whole team is vaccinated this year. Uh, we didn't have that a year ago. So basically last year the protocols were every morning we had to come in. Uh, we practice in the mornings. So we'd get there at about 7 in the morning and we'd all test. And then we'd wait and see what the results were. When we had our shutdown, uh, in December and January, uh, it was one guy got it, and then his roommate got it, and then the next room got it, and it just went right through the team. Pretty much the entire rotation got it, and uh, three of the coaches, and I think two of the grad assistants. So it was, uh, it was a very trying year. It was a difficult year just with everything. And then when you go on the road, the players that did not get COVID, they had to go test in the mornings uh, at the facilities before we started our shoot around. So you'd have to get there probably a half an hour before your shoot around time, make sure everybody cleared and was uh, negative. And then we could go through the routine of our shoot around. So uh, this year we won't have that because the whole team is vaccinated and we still are very careful, Greg. And when we do have somebody that has symptoms, we take the cautious approach and we leave them home. Uh, we'll test them if they have symptoms. And so far um, we've been fortunate. We have not had anybody knock on wood uh, that has gotten it so far and you know right now that I, we just feel that's the right thing to do if somebody wakes up they have the sniffles we keep them away from the group uh, we get them tested and so far uh, they've all been negative we had will bolden here on friday and he just is getting over it he had it about a month you had it seven eight months ago yeah it's not any fun it's not no it was it was awful and you know will being a guy that was vaccinated as well i mean obviously it can still happen so that's what that's why we are taking the cautious approach uh but yeah it, it, it hit me hard for several days and especially being somebody with a pre-existing condition and right. gone through two open heart surgeries it was scary it was a scary three or four days for sure how about just feeding the players is are you back to kind of normal on that yeah, we're, we're pretty much back to normal with that. Uh, you know, obviously we're making our guys adhere to the mask mandate. And when they go into the training table or their uh, uh, study table, go see tutors, they, they have to be in masks. And, you know, we're just, again, just taking every precaution that we possibly can to hopefully keep this thing away. It's one of my favorite parts of the stadium is seeing the athletes from different sports interact at the training table. It's just a really cool thing. It, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal environment over there. Dave Ellis and his staff do a, a great job uh, giving our guys a lot of different options uh, to eat. Uh, dinner, they're getting steaks and, and seafood on a lot of nights. So, yeah, they put a pizza oven in there. Pizza, they got a pizza oven now in there, which is terrific, by the way. Uh, they got a stir fry station where they'll teach you how to cook, and I think I'm the best cook in there. I make a yeah. mean good shrimp stir fry every carol day, so. confirm that if i called her <laughs> she out. would not yeah but no it's uh it is it's really cool to your point greg to go in there and see all the different athletes uh, bonding together yeah I, and i know that was missed during COVID. that interaction just I mean it wasn't a normal college year for anybody that was on this it, campus it, it was just such a bizarre time and hopefully one that is not repeated and you know just hopefully every uh everything is kept away this year we don't have shutdowns in our league not just us but all the teams and yeah but last year it was you would go in and they would give you a box of food and then you'd have to leave and, yeah. and go out. Uh, we were fortunate to have meals brought into us at the Hendricks uh, training complex as well. And the tutors came to our facility as well. So, you know, again, you just try to figure it out and, uh, and do the best job you can. You know, and having said all that, I thought, and I've told them both Chancellor Green and President Carter, uh, what an amazing job they did keeping this campus as open as they did last year. Cause a lot of places, we didn't let anybody really on their campus. Yeah, it, I, I agree. I, I think we have great, such great leadership here uh, with uh, with Ted Carter, with with uh, with Ronnie Green. Those guys do such a phenomenal job, and uh, and they're very supportive of uh, of us as well. And you know, I'm really excited about Trev uh, coming in here as well. He, he's been absolutely phenomenal. 
with the um, uh, interactions that we've had to this point. Very thankful Bill Moose brought me here. We love it here and, uh, and certainly hope we're here for a long time. The Chancellor's wife's a pretty big fan. She's a huge fan. Yeah, she's she's great. She was at our first scrimmage in there, and I looked up, and her she and Kent Pavelko were up there trading notes the entire time. But, yeah, Jane, is uh, she's a phenomenal oh, fan. Oh, she is. I'll be two years ago, I was back in that tunnel area, and she's out there clapping as you guys run out of the locker room. It's fantastic. Yeah. Love that. Coach is with us till the top of the hour, 402-413-2400. I see a couple more texts coming in. Keep them coming. We'll pass those along. Hey, you also have phone lines. You can talk to him as well. I know we're kind of a texting world, but the phone lines are open for you as well. Buckle up. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. More with the coach coming up. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. Game On at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. 
Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <coughs> If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. You train for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. With 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. It's our first basketball show of the year. The head coach, Fred Hoiberg, with us until the top of the hour. she got about 10 minutes left. Huskers will play exhibition games Wednesday and Sunday. They'll play Peru State Wednesday at 6, Colorado at 11 on Sunday. The Buffaloes have been pretty solid under Coach Boyle. Yeah, they sure have. I, you know, I've got great respect for Tad Boyle and everything he's all about. I coached against him when Iowa State and uh, Colorado were in the Big 12 when, when I got into coaching and always thought he did a great job with his teams. They, they play fast. They, they're always prepared. Uh, they're physical. And I know he's excited about his team. All right, question in the chat room. This is from Children of the Corn. Are there any alternate uniforms for basketball like they do in football? And just talk about your uniforms this year. Yeah, I, I think we do, Greg. I, you know, I'm not, I guess, totally versed on the amount of uniforms that we'll have, but I think we've got a couple uh, this Who season. Who which ones you're going to wear? You know what? Uh, Pat Norris is, is our equipment manager. Yeah. Uh, Pat does a great job for us, and uh, he generally works with Luca Virgilio, who is our director of operations. And they'll have discussions, and then that runs to our supervisor, which right now is Trev, and, and then we make the decision if we want to have an alternate jersey. Okay. But then per game, is it just Pat picking it per game? As well, you per game, yeah. I mean, we'll talk. Our guys have some say in that as well. And, you know, obviously at home you're wearing your lighter colors, and on the road you wear your dark, whether it's red or black. And I never understood that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I don't really either. For basketball, right? a, I would think you'd want to wear I'm, your you know primary what, I'm going to find colors. that answer for you for our next show. Well, no, I mean, it just, it's been that way forever I know, in college yeah. basketball. And, and, and now with alternate uniforms, it's it's changed. And, uh, you know, for Nebraska, having the, the red road jersey, now add a, add a black jersey to the mix as well. And then you see it in the NBA sure. as well. Uh, when I was playing for the Timberwolves, we had three uh, away jerseys at that time uh, that were all, I think we had a green, a black, and a... Um, in a blue. So we had three road jerseys and then always wore the white at home. Dennis, on our text line, Coach, uh, the scheduling, the alliance was announced a few months ago with the Pac-12 and the ACC. Will that affect men's basketball? Yeah, great question. I think they're still trying to figure out exactly how that's going to work. Obviously, we have the ACC challenge right now at this point. 
Uh, I would imagine as things continue to play out that there will be something that happens with the Pac-12 as well as either the ACC or uh, the Big Ten. But I think it's great. It's great for our league, and, and I think it adds some security. And the league also has the hook with the Big East and the Gabbitt games, which you don't play every year because there's more teams in our league than theirs. But this year you're in it, and the, and the Creighton matchup's going to – yeah, yes, so this year the, the, the Gavit game for us is Creighton. And, you know, I, I talked to uh, Greg McDermott the first two years we played on the road. And, you know, the That's right. first year we played there in front of fans. And then last year, you know, after talking to Greg, we felt that the fair thing to do was to play at their place again instead of playing in an empty arena in right. year two and then having to go back and play in front of fans. And he was great. He was totally understanding of that. Uh, I think, I, obviously, I would have done the same had it been the other way. Yeah. Uh, I asked Seamus McKnight today, I said, Rule changes, and he kind of printed me off some stuff. I went through this. I don't see anything major that has changed this year for college hoops. Yeah, nothing, nothing major. Oh. That, that's right. Um, they they are changing a couple things. We watched the referee video uh, the other night. And they're going to allow the step back this year, kind of the Harden move in the NBA, uh, where last year that was an automatic travel. Uh, the spin move, they're not going to call as many travels on the spin move. Uh, this year and we've got our meeting with Rick Boyajas who's the deputy commissioner of bas basketball uh, who's also in charge of the referees so he's going to come in and talk to us about all the rule changes tomorrow. Jessica and I were debating during the Olympics because they used the FIBA rules there yeah. where the, no goaltending. I kind of liked it. She did. She wasn't a fan. I agree. With, I agree. I, I, I do like that when that ball just make it a live ball and yeah if it, obviously having size on your roster matters in that Would situation matter. yeah absolutely you look at a guy like Rudy Gobert I mean that's a game changer for a guy like that in the FIBA rules playing for France uh, to be able to knock that thing off the rim you and I've talked in the past too I don't know why college basketball won't have advanced the ball rules late in games the women do yeah it's the women do basketball. you know I mean I think we're the only major league in the country now that does not have the advanced rule and also the only league that doesn't play four quarters now I want quarters yeah. I don't know if you're in that camp but I, I like do. that I, I like the quarters and um you know, I, 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 I've always said this. I think there should be a 24-second shot clock as well. Not too fast for college? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not for your offense. Yeah. Oh, that's great. All right, need to work in our final break of the night. Still time if you want to join us with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. A few more things to go over with the coach next. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you it's closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. Successful farmers must make good decisions every day. In pivot irrigation, the choice is simple. TNL exclusive hydraulically powered pivot irrigation systems are like no other. You get tough, reliable, and cost effective irrigation. Let TNL's 60 years of irrigation experience work for you. Call your local TNL dealer or TNL irrigation company today. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare 
Advanced Manufacturing, Construction, IT, and Ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. Of course, it's the law. Back for a final few minutes with the head coach, Fred Hoiberg, here. The Huskers, our first basketball show of the year. The Huskers will play twice this week at PBA, Peru State on Wednesday, 6 o'clock, Colorado at 11 on on a Sunday. And then you have about eight, nine, we have nine days to get ready for the opener with Western Illinois. Uh, but I think, you, as you said, this is going to be a nice week to learn a lot about your guys. Yeah, there, no doubt about it, Greg. This this is the first opportunity playing against somebody other than ourselves. We have nice, lengthy film sessions, both good and bad, after uh, scrimmages, inter-squad scrimmages that we've had over the course of the preseason. Uh, but getting out there, playing against other offenses, uh, seeing other systems, uh, playing against different coverages, uh, that's all very important part of the process and learning and uh, and teaching after we get uh, we get done with with those games. And I want to mention the Colorado game is a game for charity. You have picked a couple of charities that this is going to be for. One of them's Coach Osborne's teammates mentoring program, and the other one is for the YMCA of Lincoln for its Employee 402 program and the Nebraska Greats Foundation. Your thoughts about doing this? For yeah, I, I think the NCAA made a great move a couple of years ago when they allowed the scrimmage playing against other division one teams and the proceeds going to charity i think the first one i saw was when kansas played missouri yep. you know a huge rivalry back in the old big eight days and then when missouri went to the sec obviously that rivalry stopped and to be able to play that game in front of a packed house at the sprint center down in kansas city to raise all that money uh for charity i think it was flood relief if i'm not mistaken That's right. at that yeah. time and you know for us to be able to give back uh to local charities in this community and then go to boulder next year and do the same thing there so you are returning it we're going to return it next year yeah but I, I think it's a great move by the ncaa to uh to, to raise money for great causes did you have to twist coach osborne's arm or he's probably okay with that <laughs> he's he's excited there's there's no <laughs> doubt about it it's it's always great to uh see coach osborne i got some of his new gear which uh which pretty I, nice yeah big time yeah and and Carol too. They've got some nice female uh, brands. They didn't give her any. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to buy that. And she probably listens, so now she knows she can <laughs> hit the hit the hit one of the stores and grab that. All right. Um, we had a chance. To, I got about a minute left. We had a chance last week to talk to Wilhelm. Really good young guy. I know you're excited about his his future with this program. Yeah, he's such a great kid, and he's really fit in well since he's been here. And um, you know, just really bought into everything we're trying to do. He's such a heady player. He's got a, a tremendous basketball IQ you can play him at both the four and the five spot he's stretch five uh, when he's there to pull the big away from the basket we've always had very successful teams when you have a guy with that type of skill set that can take the bigs take the Kofi Cockburns out of the, out out of the paint uh, Hunter Dickinson all those guys so yeah he's he's been very impressive and, and we're uh, he's going to play a big part of our team this year I'm hoping Kofi would leave coach I don't know about you some of those guys. Best thing I heard from Wilhelm is he's really enjoying his college experience. Is he really likes what Lincoln has given him? So he, far. he does, and you, you know you worry sometimes with a kid from Southern California coming to the heartland like this, but it, it is. It, it's it's great, and a lot of people don't realize that, Greg. And going back to our early conversation about recruiting to get kids here to see what it's all about, they think I mean, when you hear Nebraska, when you think Midwest, it's a big cornfield, but when they get here, they see everything that this place has to offer. Good to see you. Have fun this yeah, week. Great seeing you. Thank you. Good luck. Fred Hoiberg and the Huskers will take the court on Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, against Peru State. Our network coverage with Kent Pavelka, Jake Muehlheisen begins at 5. And then on Sunday, Halloween, 11 o'clock tip, pregame coverage begins at 10. Thanks to Tim, Andrew, and all of you for listening tonight. Have a great evening. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across.